A consumer alert tonight as you do your holiday shopping. Two News Problem Solver Michelle Lowry warns in tonight's segment two, the rules for lead levels in toys can be confusing. Alex McCoy was excitedly preparing for the birth of her first granddaughter. I could cry thinking that I might have given that to my granddaughter. This plush pink bear bought at a Tulsa Babies R Us store was concerning. It says, warning, contained lead may be harmful if eaten or chewed, may generate dust containing lead. And I got very angry, <laughs> very upset. Federal guidelines require that the outside of a child's toy must contain less than 90 parts per million of lead. The amount permitted on the inside is even higher. I have heard horror stories about lead in children's products. McCoy's toy was never independently tested for lead, but recently similar labels were found on toys bought from several Phoenix area Toys R Us stores. Those toys were part of the store's Animal Alley line of stuffed animals. And our Scripps affiliate in Phoenix contacted Diane Eccles, Chief of Environmental Health Issues at the Arizona Department of Health. I would think in t today's age we could find ways to, to not have pieces and parts that still contain lead. As part of an investigation in Arizona, employees of our affiliate bought seven stuffed animals with the warning labels, plus a Jeffrey the Giraffe doll, which did not have a warning label. They were all taken to a certified lab in Phoenix for testing. In the television station's test, the toy that tested with the highest amount of lead was Jeffrey the Giraffe. Remember, he didn't have a lead warning. But all of them tested well below the federal safety limit. So why the warning labels on any of the toys? Our Phoenix station got the same response McCoy did when contacting the R.S. family. In both situations, the company says they are following an Illinois law that requires manufacturers put warning labels on any product with lead content that is more than 40 parts per million. It is the strictest of any state law and well below the federal limit of 90. It was more like a form letter that they were just meeting the minimum requirements of answering my question. Instead of keeping the inventory separate, the company decided to put warning labels on any item that would come under Illinois' law. Again, we did not send McCoy's toy off for testing, but remember, the sample of toys tested in Phoenix had less than 40 parts per million of lead. So again, why the warning labels? A Toys R Us spokesperson would not share their lead test results and would not explain. I can see where it would be extremely confusing and concerning. So how much lead is too much? Health experts, both locally and nationally, tell us there is no clear-cut answer. What could be dangerous for one child is not an issue for another. But groups like the one that spearheaded the law in Illinois want the level of lead dropped to zero. McCoy has her own advice. Read labels. And if it says contains lead, don't buy it and bring it to the attention of the company. Since Toys R Us was informed of the lead test results on some of their stuffed animals, the company started covering at least some of the lead warning labels with a little orange sticker. Once again, they had no comment. McCoy intends to take no chances. We'll make homemade toys, I guess. There are several common ways children are poisoned by lead, which causes damage to the brain and other organs. You'll find complete information about the Oklahoma Childhood Lead Poisoning Program in the Problem Solver section of KJRH.com. Michelle Lowry, 2 News Works For You.